What's going on guys? This video will cover different standardization techniques. We'll start off with how to apply them to linear regression, why you would apply them to linear regression, how to interpret them, and then how to apply them to K and N, and finally how to interpret if we were to do a log transformation to Y. So we're going to start with centering. So centering just means that we subtract the mean from each observation of that independent variable. So the first step would be to find the mean of each of our independent variables. So the mean of our x1 variable is just going to be equal to 4. And the mean of our x2 variable is just going to be equal to 3.5. So now if we want to center our variables, we're just going to subtract the observations. So we take 4 minus the mean of our predictor, which is 4, and we'll get 0. And then we take the next observation, 1 minus the mean of our variable, and we get negative 3. And then the next one, 4 minus 4 to get 0, and then 7 minus 4 to get 3. So our new x1 observations are going to be 0, negative 3, 0, and 3 after center. And then we can do the same thing for x2. So it would just be 1 minus 3.5, and then 2 minus 3.5. 3 minus 3.5, and then 8 minus 3.5. And it's going to give negative 2.5, negative 1.5, negative 0.5, and 4.5. So if you were to build a linear regression model from our original predictors, or this data set here, this is what our coefficient estimates would look like. Now, if we were to build a new linear regression model, but this time with our predictors centered, our new equation would become y is equal to 5 minus 0.5909x1 plus 1.0909x2. So notice that when we make our new equation after centering our predictors, the only thing that changes is our intercept term. So to find out what our intercept term will be without knowing it, just from our original equation, is if we plug in the mean of our predictor variables, so our original equation 3.5455 minus 0 0.5909, and we plug in our x1 mean which we found to be 4, and then plus our x2 coefficient, and then the mean of our x2 variable, which was 3.5, this will produce a value of 5, which is the same thing as our new intercept value. Now the other thing about this value of 5 is it's also equal to the mean of our dependent variable. So if we add up 8 plus 5 plus 5 plus 2 divided by 4, we will get a value of 5, which is the new intercept after centering. So when we center our predictors, we're going to get a new intercept that's equal to the mean of our dependent variable. And our coefficients for our predictors will not change. So now we can learn how to scale our predictors. So scaling just means we divide each predictor by its standard deviation. So to find the standard deviation of x1, it would just be equal to each observation minus the mean, which we found to be 4, squared, plus 1 minus 4 squared, plus 4 minus 4 squared, and then plus 7 minus 4 squared. And then we're going to divide this by the number of observations minus 1. So n minus 1 would give us 3. And if we solve for this, we'll get a value of 4.5. Now to find the standard deviation, we just take the square root of 4.5, and we'll get a value of 2.449. And then we can do the same thing for x2. So it'd just be 1 minus 3.5 squared plus 2 minus 3.5 squared 
and then we continue on for the other two terms divided by 3. And then if we take the square root of this value, we'll end up with a standard deviation of x2 equal to 3.109. So this is the standard deviation of x1. So when we standardize our observations, what we're going to do is we're going to take our observations and then divide them by the standard deviation. So for the first observation of x1, we would just do 4 divided by 2.449. And this will give a value of 1.63. The next observation would just be 1 divided by 2.449, which will give a value of 0 0.408. And then we can do the same thing for the 4 and the 7. And we'll just get values of 1.63 and 2.86. And then we can do the same thing for our x2 predictor. So we'll take our observation, 1 divided by the standard deviation of x2, which is 3.109, and we get a value of 0.3216. And we do the same thing for the other three observations, 0 0.64, 0 0.965, and finally 2.57. So again, this is the original equation we start with if we were to enter in our original data set. Now, if we were to standardize our predictors like we just did, our new equation would become y is equal to 3.5455 minus 1.4474x1 and then plus 3.3918x2. So notice when we standardize our predictors, the intercept stays the same, but the predictor coefficient values change. So this goes from 0.5909 to 1.44, and then 1.09 to 3.39. So when we center the intercept chain, when we center our predictors, the intercept changes, but the predictors stay the same. When we scale our predictors, the intercept stays the change, but the predictors change. So how do we get these new predictors? So if we take the original predictor value of say, negative 0.5909, so our coefficient value for x1, and we multiply this value by the standard deviation of x1, which is 2.449, we'll get the new coefficient estimate of negative 1.4474. And then we do the same thing for x2. So the original value was 1.0909. If we multiply this value by the standard deviation, which is 3.109, we'll get the new coefficient estimate of 3.3918. So when we, standard, when we scale our predictors, the new standard deviation of our predictors is going to be 1. So if we take the standard deviation of x1 here, we get a standard deviation of 1. Or the standard deviation of our new x2 observations, we get a standard deviation of 1. When we center our predictors, if we take the average of our x1, we would get a mean of 0. And we take the average of our x2, we get a mean of zero. So when we center, we're setting our predictor's means to zero. When we scale, we're setting our predictor's standard deviations to one. Standardizing predictors. So we already learned how to center our predictors, and we learned how to scale our predictors. So standardization is just scaling and then standardizing our predictor. So for the first observation, it would just be the observation minus the mean divided by the standard deviation which would give a value of zero. And then for the second observation, just be one minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, which give a value of negative 1.225. And we do the same thing for the next two observations. And then for x2, it'd just be one minus the mean divided by the standard deviation of x2, which is 3.109, should give a value of negative 0.204. And then we can fill in these values 
And so our new predictors, our standardized predictors, are each going to have a mean of zero and a standard deviation equal to one. So original model was 3.5455 minus 0.5909x1 plus 1.0909x2. Now when we centered our predictors, only the intercept value changed to a value of 5. And when we scaled our predictors, only the coefficient estimates of our predictors changed. Now when we standardize our predictors, both the intercept is going to change and the coefficient estimates are going to change. And they're going to change the exact same way that they did before. So when we centered our predictors, the intercept changed from 3.5455 to 5. So we're still going to have now an intercept of 5. And then when we scaled our predictors, our coefficient estimates changed to 1.44 and 3.39, which is what they're going to be now still. So we learned how to center our predictors, scale our predictors, and standardize our predictors. So now we're going to learn what happens if we both standardize our predictors and our dependent variable. So we already found the mean of y to be equal to 5. We haven't found the standard deviation of y yet. So to solve for that, it's just the sum of 2 minus 5 squared plus 5 minus 5 squared plus 5 minus 5 squared plus 8 minus 5 squared. And then divided by n minus 1, which is just 3, and we'll get a value of 6. So we take the square root of 6 to get the standard deviation, we'll get a value of 2.449. So this is what our equation was when we standardized just the predictors. So now if we standardize both the predictors and the dependent variable, our equation is going to become y is equal to negative 0.5909x1 plus 1.385x2. So notice when we standardize both sides, the intercept gets dropped. So there's no more intercept term. And the coefficient estimates for our predictors change. So how do we calculate what these new predictors are going to be from our old predictors, our new coefficient values? Well, so what we're doing when we standardize our dependent variable is y minus its mean divided by its standard deviation. So if we set that equal to our old equation, which was 5 minus 1.4474x1 plus 3.3918x2. Now since we're subtracting 5 from our mean and then dividing it by 2.449, in order to balance our equation, we do the same thing on the other side. So we'll subtract 5 and then we'll divide by a standard deviation of 2.449. So when we simplify the right side, we're going to be left with 5 minus 5, which cancels out, and then minus 1.4474 divided by 2.449x1, and then plus 3.3918x2, and it's divided by 2.449. And then when we divide those, we're just left with y is equal to negative 0.5909x1 plus 1.385x2. So we simply subtract the mean from the other side of the equation and then divide our coefficient estimates by the standard deviation of y. So we learned how to standardize our variables in linear regression, but we didn't learn why we'd want to standardize them. So the two main standardization methods you would use for linear regression is you'd either want to center your predictors, 
or you'd want to standardize your predictors and your dependent variable. So we'll talk about why you want to center your predictors with an example. So say you have the x variable, which has values 1, 3, 5, and 7, and you want to make a polynomial term. So the values would become 1, 9, 25, and 49. So if you were to plot this, it would be an upward sloping line. But if you notice, this line is similar or close to being straight. So we can say that the correlation between the x variable and the newly created x squared variable, variable is high. Now, if instead we were to center our x variable first before finding the polynomial term, our values would become 9, 1, 1, and 9. So if we were to plot this, it would form a parabola looking shape. So if we were to take the correlation of this, it'd be near zero. So whenever we create either a polynomial term or an interaction term, such as x1 times x2, we want to center our predictors first. And the reason we're doing this is to avoid multicollinearity. Now, another reason we want to center our predictors, let's say we have the equation y is equal to negative 2 plus 5 times height. So if a person is zero height, we would get a prediction of negative two. And say this was weight. So we guess a negative two weight value. Now we learned if we center our predictors, it changes the intercept value. So say we centered our height variable. So the new equation is now y is equal to three plus five times height. So this intercept value can now be read as the weight of an individual that is average height. So whenever a person that is average height, it'll guess a value of three. And to generalize this, we can say that the new intercept value, when all predictors are centered, is the value of the dependent variable when all independent variables are at their means. So by centering our predictors, we get we can get a better interpretation for our intercept value. Now the reason we want to standardize our predictors is say we have the formula y is equal to 5 plus 200x1 plus 3x2. Now since these numbers appear to be on much different scales where the x1 observations are probably much larger than our x2 observations, it's hard to compare their effects on the y variable. So by standardizing our predictors, we might end up with y is equal to 0.8x1 plus 0.5x2. So the way that we can interpret this is both sides are standardized. We can say with a point or with a one standard deviation in x1, we can expect a 0.8 standard deviation increase in y or with a one standard deviation increase in x2, we expect a 0.5 standard deviation increase in y. So by standardizing, we're able to put both our coefficient values on the same scale so that it's more easy to compare the effects that our variables have on the dependent variable. So we learned how to build the different linear regression models based off which standardization method we chose but we didn't learn how to actually use the models we built. So say we're given an observation of 5, 5. So in the if we had the original model, we would simply plug in 5 for our x1 value and plug in 5 for our x2 value, and then we would get a prediction. And the prediction for this would be 6.0455. And this is the model we got when we centered our predictors. Now in order to plug in our observation of 5, 5, we would have to subtract the mean of our x1 value, just like we did to our coefficient, or just like we did to our observations of the original model. So it would be 5 minus the mean of x1. And then for our x2, we would plug in 5 minus the mean of x2. And then when we do this, when we solve, we would get a prediction of, again, 6.0455. Now this is the model built when we scaled our predictors. 
So when we centered, we had to subtract the mean. When we scale, we have to divide by the standard deviation. So for our observation of 5, 5, it would be 5 divided by the standard deviation of x1. And for x2, we'd plug in 5 divided by our standard deviation of x2. And then if we solve for this, we would again get a prediction of 6.0455. Now standardized predictors. So we scaled and then we centered. So for our x1 value for plug in 5, we would subtract the mean and then we would divide by the standard deviation of x1. And then for x2, if we were to try to plug in observation of 5, we have to subtract the mean and then divide by the standard deviation. And when we do this, we would get a predicted value of again 6.0455. So now the last example. So we standardize both sides of our equation here. So we're just going to plug in our x1 just like we did when we only standardized the right. So we standardize the right side. We do 5 minus the mean over the standard deviation. And then for our x2 value, 5 minus the mean over the standard deviation. So now if we were to solve for this equation, we'd end up getting a value of 0.4269. Now, in order to get back to our original units, since this side is also standardized, we have to multiply by the standard deviation, because before it was divided by the standard deviation, and then add back our mean of y. So we take our value of 0.4269, which was our prediction from this equation times its standard deviation of y, which we found to be 2.449, and then we add back the mean of y, which is just 5, we're going to get a value of 6.0455. So if you notice, with all the equations we built, we're going to end up with the same prediction as long as we enter our values incorrectly. And on top of that, no matter which standardization method we use, so center, scale, standardize, our t values are going to remain the same and our p values are going to remain the same. So no matter which method we chose, the predictors are still going to have the same effect on our dependent variable. And on top of that, our prediction accuracy is still going to be the same for every model. So every model is going to produce the same predictions it's going to produce the same r squared value, and each of our predictors is going to remain with the same predicted t value and have the same significance, no matter which standardization method we choose. So that covers standardization for linear regression. So now we're going to cover standardization for k nearest neighbors. So say we had two predictors, x1 and x2. So x1 could take any value between 0 and 1 and x2 could take any value greater than 150. So if we're given the question, if k is equal to 1, what is the closest observation from for 0.3 to 70? So just by looking at the data, we can probably assume it's going to be the second observation. And when we get a Euclidean distance of 0.3 minus 0.3 squared plus 300 minus 270 squared, and we just take the square root. Now let's say for instance, if this x1 value instead of 0.3 was equal to 1, or the highest possible value x1 could take, the closest observation would still be observation 2. Now let's say instead this x1 value took a value of 0. The closest observation again would still be this value x2. So no matter what value x1 takes, closest observation is still going to be this observation 2 value. Now the reason for this is that x2 is on a much larger scale than x1, so it has a greater effect on choosing the closest observations in k and n. So how do we address this? So we address this by standardizing our predictors. So if we standardize our predictors, it'll put them both on the same scale, and then x1 and x2 will have equal impact on choosing which is the closest observation. So whenever you use K and N, 
and you have predictors that are on different scales, you always want to standardize your predictors first. So that wraps up the standardization techniques. Now we're going to learn about a transformation of our dependent variable. So we learned last time that if we apply the natural log to our y dependent variable, it's one way to address heteroscedasticity or unequal variances in our residual terms. So say we have the equation that the natural log of y is equal to 1 plus 1x1 plus 0.5x2. And we want to plug in an observation of 1, 1. So we simply do 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 0.5 times 1. And this would be produce a value of 2.5. So we're left with the log of y is equal to 2.5. So in order to get this to regular terms or just y, we just take the exponent of both sides. So the log to an exponent cancels, so you're just left with y is equal to the exponent of 2.5. And then this would produce a prediction of 12.18. Now let's say you wanted to form a prediction interval. So let's say your prediction interval says that it's going to be from 1 to 4. And your prediction was 2.5. So in order to get your prediction interval in regular terms, or the original terms, you would do your exponent to the 1, which is equal to 2.718, and then your exponent to the 4, and you get 54.598. Now if you notice, this is our prediction, 12.18. This is the lower end of our confidence interval, 2.718. This is the upper end. Now, generally when we do linear regression, the upper end of our confidence interval and the lower end are going to be centered around the prediction. But here we have 2.718, uh, 12.18, and then way over here we have the upper end, 54.598. So when we apply a transformation like the log to any of our independent or dependent variables, our predictions change. So our predictions are going to be different. So in the standardization methods, we ended up with the same prediction no matter which standardization method we chose. Now when we apply something like the natural log, we're going to end up with different predictions. We're going to end up with different parameter estimates. And we're going to end up with different statistical uh, tests for our parameters. So if we didn't apply the natural log transformation, we might end up with, say, x1 is significant, x2 is not. But then when we apply the natural log, we might end up with, say, x1 is significant and x2 is also significant. So not only does it change the effects of our parameters, it changes our predictions and their statistical tests. And our r-squared value would change. So the difference between applying a transformation is we're going to end up with completely different results. When we apply standardization to our linear regression, we get the exact same results, they're just scaled, so we can scale them back and end up with the exact same estimates. Okay, so that wraps up this section. Next section will be lasso and ridge, and that'll be the last thing we'll learn for chapter three. Thanks.